If there's one thing that anyone who's ever wanted to lose weight has done, it's to check the internet for advice. You're always just a few clicks away from endless information about health and nutrition, many of which are big, fat lies. Welcome to The Bestest, the channel that provides you the bestest news and videos you should know about. On this episode, we are exposing 10 of the biggest diet myths and misconceptions that you should stop believing. Before we start, please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for more amazing videos. When it comes to diet and weight loss, the only piece of advice that will always, always be universally true is that you should seek the help of a professional. See, the relationship between food choices, your body, and your weight is very complex. What works for one person may not necessarily have the same effects on you. Which brings us to the first diet myth that should be put to rest. At number 10, weight loss supplements. Despite what companies will have you believe, weight loss supplements have rarely proven effective. Most of the time, the only reason any of these supplements ever work is the placebo effect. Say you are swayed by their marketing tactic and buy a bottle of their supplements. Chances are you want it to work so bad you become more conscious of what you eat and how physically active you are. Most supplements are hardly effective on their own. The best and often most expensive ones may help you shed off a small amount of weight. But really, your weight loss will be more because of the lifestyle changes you've made, not the supplements. And number 9. Ditching Supplements After hearing about the first item on the list, you're probably thinking that supplements are a waste of money. That too isn't true. Confusing? That is why asking a professional is always the best first step. Although a well-rounded diet is the most important component of health, there are still situations when supplements can be beneficial, such as the case for those who have health conditions, are on the restrictive diets, are pregnant, or breastfeeding, or are over the age of 50. And number eight, eight glasses of water. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? We've been hearing it since we were kids. You must drink eight glasses of water every day. That sounds reasonable, right? Newsflash, eight glasses is not the goal. There are many factors that affect your body's water needs, such as exercise, environment, your diet, and your overall health. For most people, they can stay healthy and hydrated even when they drink fewer than eight glasses a day. For others, they need more. So stop counting and start listening to your body instead. While we're on the topic of liquids and hydrating, at number 7, smoothies and juice diets. Some self-proclaimed experts will sell you smoothie or juice diet plans that they claim will lead to quick and easy weight loss. This is partly true. Deprive yourself of whole, solid foods for 21 days straight and chances are you really will lose weight. But as what any nutritionist will tell you, a balanced diet is always the ideal choice. Replacing all your meals with smoothies or juices may mean you're not getting enough of the other nutrients you need daily, such as protein, fat, and carbohydrates. It's also not sustainable. When they transition back to normal eating habits, most people who follow a smoothie or juice diet often regain the weight they initially lost. At number 6, no fat, low fat. Listen up, fat does not make you fat. That is, as long as your intake is within the healthy range. Although this myth is slowly being put to rest, the large number of foods being advertised as no fat or low fat still makes many people fear high fat foods. The problem with this? For one, fat alone does not cause weight gain, so people better stop blaming it all on fat. 2. Lots of high-fat foods are also extremely nutritious and help maintain a healthy weight. And 3. Strict low-fat diets are being discouraged by experts because of the health risks they pose, including metabolic syndrome and even an increase in risk for heart disease. 
So probably thinking by now, it's all about calories, right? Also, wrong. At number five, calories in, calories out. Okay, this is not entirely false. It is a fact that creating a calorie deficit would result in weight loss. When your body burns more calories than it takes, you start shedding off some pounds. But the calories in, calories out theory fails to account for many other variables such as genetics, medical conditions, and metabolic adaptations. Some people also end up going for low-calorie foods without looking at the nutrient value. As a result, some people end up having a more difficult time losing weight. Okay. At number four, eat less, move more. Fact, body fat is stored energy. When you move, you use energy. When you use energy, you lose fat. Therefore, logic tells us that if you eat less and you move more, then you will lose weight. In theory, this works. In reality, it may be bad, especially for people with serious weight problems. Restricting food intake while increasing physical activity may not be enough and rarely works in the long term. It's like telling someone with alcoholism to drink less or someone with depression to cheer up. For people with weight problems, a holistic and sustained change in lifestyle is needed, something that is best planned with a professional. The number three myth that you should stop believing, carbs make you fat. What? What the fuck? Just like fat, carbs have been receiving most of the blame for things like obesity, diabetes, and many other health conditions. The reality is, as with almost anything else when it comes to diet, it's all about balance and healthy choices. Moderate amounts of high-fiber carbs like legumes and starchy root veggies are beneficial for your health. In fact, dietary patterns that are high in the fiber-rich carbs, like the Mediterranean diet, are associated with reduced risk of obesity, diabetes, and heart diseases. Coming up at number two, small frequent meals. A lot of people eat small, frequent meals throughout the day, hoping to boost metabolism and lose a few inches. But research shows that this is not always the best choice for weight loss. Small frequent meals should only become the rule of thumb if you have a condition that requires you to do this. Examples include diabetes, coronary artery disease, irritable bowel syndrome, or pregnancy. Otherwise, you can stick to a regular meal pattern. And finally, at number one, weight loss diet fads. Damn! Of course, the weight loss industry will tell you diets work. How else will they make money? But look into evidence-based studies and you will find that these weight loss diets rarely work in the long term. In fact, about 85% of people who stick to a single weight loss diet plan end up gaining back the pounds they lost. Studies further show that dieters are more likely to gain weight in the future. Also, there is no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to dieting. A keto website will claim to be the best diet. A paleo book will claim the same thing. An expert on intermittent fasting, the Atkins diet, and the Whole30 program will all tell you that their dietary strategy is superior to others. But none of them are. There is no magic bullet when it comes to weight loss or dieting. So the next time you plan to lose weight, don't simply take your friend's word for it. Don't get easily swayed by that hot celebrity's testimonials. Ask a professional instead. Which of these diet lies did you once fell for and how did you bounce back from it? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to The Bestest and make sure to hit the bell to access more of our videos. Thank you so much for watching and until our next Bestest video.